and always a reminder for myself. Ana abdukul ajeezu da'eefu, miskeenu, zalimu, jahal. And but for the grace of Allah Zawajal's rahmah and mercy that we are still in existence. <coughs> Alhamdulillah that Allah Zawajal grant us a, a life in which to see the holy month of Safar open and the month of Haybah. It's not a month of punishment but it's a month of majestic dress. Subhana alimul hakim, glory be to him who bestows upon ancient knowledges and ilm and hikmah and wisdom and that the movement from Muharram was making a hijrah from our dunya and our dunya desires into the cave and into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad so Muharram we move away and we begin our pilgrimage and we stop at a cave, Qahr Thar. That cave is the cave of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad the real cave of Allah Everything else and all other Prophets are merely placeholders of the Muhammadan haqqaiq, means the highest level of realities is in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad that cave we never left and the hijrah of Sayyidina Muhammad is to Malakut and Medina to Munawwara, the city of lines. That everything was symbolic, we move from the active mulk and the active world and we leave the desires of the world for the desires of the hereafter. And between these two realities is a Muhammadan heart, is a cave of safety. And that we entered into that cave and from Muharram Allah begin to guide through Holy Qur'an which Surah Tawbah verse 40 is the gateway in which to move into this cave. Safar comes to dress us from the realities of the cave. The grandeur of what's in this cave and its immensity and every alim, every knowledge in and every hikmah and wisdom. We said before that knowledge without wisdom is of very little use and it can harm people. So that if you think you've gained a knowledge from following a shaykh that's filled with knowledges but you yet have not gained the wisdom and that's where the danger is that you hear from shaykhs and their uloom and their knowledges that are very high and being new on the path taking it and just spreading everywhere without spreading the actual shaykh's teaching which is the hikmah of how to use it. Just taking words and putting it in our own and dispersing it it may be void of the hikmah and the wisdom that was required in the disbursement of that medicine. So then Allah dresses this month with knowledges and wisdom. That's why the sleepers of the cave, Ashab al Kaf, they left the tyrancy of dunya. So all of these examples in this holy surah which is dressing this month. Qur'an dresses and guides all of creation and the dress and the guide of this month is Surat Al-Kahf. And that's why very few people are understanding that reality so their talks and topics are very all over the place. This is a very specific guidance, a Muhammadan guidance from Shams al-Arafeen which are guiding from the reality of the soul and the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad which is Manzil Qur'an. So it should make sense that if the heart of Prophet is guiding, it guides with Qur'an. And that's why each month they'll give the surah and begin to reflect upon what the surah is pulling us in the beginning. So that Allah is recalling for us, do you remember the, the sleepers of the cave? That they stood up from tyrancy, they stood up from that which the dunya was trying to make them to worship. Now more than ever 
This dunya is designed to completely destroy faith. And the key for faith, for those who wish to have uh, divinely faith is a Muhammadan key. And everyone should reflect what they believe God is. We have many different cultures watching, different religions watching. Whatever you think God is, we have to think that He is pure, that He is clean, that He is just. And whatever's most beatific, most purified, most righteousness, the most of whatever we could think of goodness is what we believe the Divinely Kingdom is. So then that would make us to look for that kingdom on earth. That kingdom is not in tailgate parties and nightclubs and putting things on your neck and, and walking around naked with crosses on you and nakedness and, and saying, this is representing God's kingdom. God's kingdom is righteousness, cleanliness, purity, everything we think that God should be and His kingdom should be, the cleanest and beyond what we can think of it should be. It should be found on this earth, not we do dirty things here and hope the kingdom is clean there. God's kingdom is on earth and His will shall be done on this earth as it is in heaven. And that's why we say last days that kingdom is coming. The kingdom of God doesn't have Ganges, Ganges means dirty and filthy to us. God's waters are the kawthar and pure. Not the filthy, the dirty where the waste of humans and dead humans are floating and saying, this has to be something from Divine. People have to wake up and realize that has nothing to do with Divine and that's actually from Jahannam. And anything from Allah is pure and purified. Means that all these realities are showing to us that the Kingdom of Allah is on this earth and its key is in the love of Sayyidina Muhammad the only one who represents God's Kingdom on earth. As all other nations left every possible example of the Kingdom and now follow whatever desire and want that they want, that Allah's majestic and majesty was to leave that example to be pure. That, look, look how my beloved one, his nation represents that purity, represents that cleanliness, represents that reality of what we think God's Kingdom to be and we see it to be on to this earth. That is the key that Dajjal wants to take. So more than ever now is a time in which faith is being pulled that you have to do this or you won't survive, you have to do this or you won't survive and it eats away fragment by fragment and bit by bit from the brain and the heart of believers. Every day they're panicking and thinking, oh really, is this really like in statistic is like this, it's really like this, is this like this? And that's all the shaitan wants so that the faith becomes weakened. Faith is something we said is very individual, it's not collective. The collective group doesn't have the same faith, not at all. You can be sitting next to someone and you don't know what they hear and what they see of the heavens and their outer may show no sign of difference. Faith is what we make it. So when we follow these awliyaullah and their teachings it's based on bringing us into guidance and then we believe it, we live by it, we eat and breathe and drink it. Now you in this month look to see and see that nobody's talking about Surat Al-Kahf. And if you find anybody talk about Surat Al-Kahf on YouTube from different months or different talks, their talks are all about bringing doubt which is astonishing. But on these subjects they don't bring the uloom and the knowledges and the secrets that the believer needs today as a remedy and a medicine because Allah's Qur'an is, is eternal, it's beyond space and time. Its relevance must be for at every moment and every, every second. Instead you read their knowledges or listen to their, their YouTubes 
And it's about casting doubt. We don't know if there was three of them, was there seven of them, was there eight of them? We don't know if the names were this or that or this. So by the time you listen to the talk you go away confused that, ah this is… none of this is relevant right now and I don't need to know. And that's exactly what shaitan wants. That's why we… and this surah asks us, which verse does it say Haji Shahid Shahaji Shahzad, which verse Allah is actually saying because these knowledges and this cave is not compared to anything that you've ever come across in your understanding and in your journey. Give me one second to, to draw attention to what Allah is, is, is asking from us on this journey because He mentions in Surat Al-Kahf. <clears throat> Heavens, paradise, within them, favored with destiny and wealth. Earth and vegetation, that's great, and I can't there Justice and sinful terror, bow down, accept the bliss. Ask of thee, the ancient rays be repeated for them, to their face, and suggest the signs of your Lord forgetting the deeds. It's full of mercy, call for that punishment. 19. 19 Shaykh? When Allah says that don't uh, ask except for the people of zikr. Twenty-eight, Shaykh. Twenty-eight. Hajj, if you read uh, Surah twenty-eight. <clears throat> These are for people who are inside this reality, and what Allah is giving of guidance, because Surah Al-Kahf is all about the guidance and how to accompany the people of this knowledge. Later we'll get into the qissa between Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Khidr But before that event, verse 28, Surat Al-Kahf, 1828 inshaAllah, Bismillah. <laughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Wasbir nafsaka ma'alladheena yad'oona rabbahum bilghadati wal'ashiyya يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَهُ وَلَا تَعْذُ عَيْنَاكَ عَنْهُمْ تُرِيدُ زِينَةَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا تُطِعْ مَنْ غَفَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ وَكَانَ عَمْرُهُ فُرُطًا صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ Sadaqallah nadeem wa barakatuh Rasulul Kareem, Habibul Azeem that Allah is giving for us 
the guidance, not the shaykhs make up things. And Allah is giving us the adab and the discipline especially in the Dajjalic system that is now more and more prevalent upon this earth. Allah is keep thy soul content with those who call upon their Lord morning and evening. Means this not only a sharaf for Prophet this was the holy nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad This is a, a glad tidings for Ahlul Dhikr because Allah is giving the command of the nazar of Prophet that the holy gaze of Sayyidina Muhammad's nazar will be upon those whom are continuously in zikr of Allah day and night. So this is an eternal blessing but the subject that we're talking about for tonight is that for us and our understanding Allah is, is keep and be covenant, content with those whom their Ahlul Dhikr and that you know their Ahlul Dhikr that day and night they are doing their zikr, they have awrads, they have all of their practices they're supposed to do. Seeking His face that not only their Ahlul Dhikr but they have in their awrad and this is the Fajr awrad that all we seek is the holy face of Allah not the paradises and not the fear of hell. But we ask that Allah place us in the proximity of the Divinely face. So that we already see in the Naqshbandi awrad that Mawlana Shaykh had included all of that. And let not thy eyes pass beyond them. Means that's it, just keep the company of these ulul am and their associations of zikr whom their whole wujud is to be in the face, receive the Divinely lights and guidance and grace of wajallah wajik al kareem, the reflection that dresses out to the face of Sayyidina Muhammad then Allah says, it's enough for you, stay with those people, stay with that association. Don't leave the people who may represent for you pomp and glitter of this life. They speak nice, they have thousands and thousands of people in associations, they have tens of thousands of views. And these are, we know what madhab that is. And everybody says, oh their, their Arabic is so amazing, what they do is like this, their so audience is huge and Allah is giving a warning. That don't, don't go to those people, don't go to these other people, don't go to any scientists, don't go to anything from this dunya thinking you're going to get any type of remedy, any type of understanding from Allah They that don't obey them. For any of those whose hearts that we have permitted to neglect the remembrance of us, means if they're not making dhikr of Allah run from them. They're not going to give guidance, they're not going to give any understanding that will be in accordance with Allah For if they did Allah would have given them zikr of Allah because Allah is saying, it's I'm giving permission and no permission. If I did not give them permission to remember my name, don't deal with them, don't listen to them, don't take any guidance from them. And that's why the shiukh have their own group of doctors, they have their own group of people whom are all ahl dhikr and they make their dhikr, they get their isharats and they get their understanding and it's enough, kafi is enough from Allah And that's Allah's warning that don't obey them whose hearts we have permitted to neglect the remembrance of us. And one who follows his own desires and Allah is describing these people, they follow their own desires, they do every type of naughty thing, forbidden thing, bad thing. We don't even know what intention they're giving people advice for. They're getting paid to, to, to do things, to say things, whose case has gone beyond all limits. Because now in the last days their whole interest is the destruction of mankind. They want six out of seven people off this earth. So the guidance that coming from these and those and those whom represent them, Allah just saying, if they're not making zikr very easily, close your ears to it. No matter how interesting you find their facts, how amazing you think their dialogue, close your ears to it. For if it was coming from Allah is very clear, 
Allah would have made the person to be Ahlul Dhikr. Allah would have guided them to remember Him. So then there's two stations broadcasting onto this earth right now. Things that are coming from Allah and Allah gave the criteria. If they're coming from our Divinely Presence they must be very strong Ahlul Dhikr in which their teaching is not only that they make dhikr Allah but they are asking for haqiqat al-tawajjuh, haqiqat al-tawassul, all the realities that are within the heart. They're asking for the face that they trained all their life to be in the presence under their tafakkur, under their contemplation, to be under the nazar of the face, the face of Allah the face of Sayyidina Muhammad and the face of ulul amr, Fa'atiullah, Atiya Rasul, ulul amri minkum. That obedience is from the Divinely face. That face that we don't understand that reflects to the face of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why hadith of Prophet I have one face, one reality that always faces Allah and I have one face facing my nation. And that face is the face that faces all the awliyaullah. They take their power from that source and that's Allah making reference into that holy verse Ayatul Kareem in Surat Al Kahf because these are now all the realities of the cave that we're asking to enter into this cave, we're asking to be guided from the reality of this cave. More than ever now everybody's talking facts, they're turning on TV, I'll, I don't think the TV is Ahlul Dhikr. I don't think anyone on that station is Ahlul Dhikr, actually they're Ahlul Qaybah, they're the flesh eaters. So when you watch TV you're watching, what's the, the show the flesh eater ones that was so gross you can't even watch it. They were eating people, it's a big series, Walking Dead. Walking Dead, yeah. That's it. So television. Anyone taking their news is most definitely not Ahlul Dhikr, you're actually the walking dead people. They sit and they backbite every possible person is imaginable. So this is Ahlul Qaybah, this is the people of, of uh, Jahannam. So there's no guidance coming from them. So that's not the source of anyone's guidance. That's just pure entertainment if that's where you're going to choose to get your information. You only watch to find out where this and where's the fire and where's the disaster, where's the things happening. But you're not trying to listen to them for guidance because Allah is giving it very clear. For those whom are attracted to this understanding and they're looking for guidance from Holy Qur'an not the debate on, on how many there were, was it, was it not, was it, no there are, there are seven, they represent the seven eternal attributes of Allah they represent the face. That's what we talked before, why are there seven? Because you have one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven. Each wali sits on a position, Samuel Basir. Alim al Qadir uh, and Nur al Hai. So, it means seven eternal essences of the Divinely face that never perishes. These are why these attributes are essence, zat. These attributes are essences, they're pre eternal. When they came into existence is beyond understanding. And these awliyaullah they're dressed with these names, they represent those realities upon the earth. So the seven and the one and the lion that represents the perfection and the guardian of that reality. So it means it's not a debate, they're not debating things whom Allah has taught and Allah said in Qur'an uh, Ayatul Kareem, uh, nobody knows it but a few. Didn't say nobody knows it, Allah just said, nobody knows this reality but a few. And those few are the ones whom are teaching these realities. So that's why when they, when they come to this understanding, to these shaykhs and to this way, they're coming for this guidance. They're not coming for debates from Qur'an, they're coming to be guided by the Qur'an which is the light emanating from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad 
So these are the knowledges, these are the realities within the cave to be dressed by these realities. So tonight what we wanted to remind was that not everybody is going to be from seven sleepers of the cave. So what Allah gave for us as an understanding in this month was their dog. That as they were being ordered to run and to leave, they set out for their journey and their dog accompanied them. And as the dog is accompanying them and coming and following them, they had a regret that this dog is going to give us away. Wherever we're going to go and hide ourselves, what are we going to do with this dog? And as a result every year we talk about it and every year it gets harder not easier is that they started to throw rocks. So the seven sleepers these awliyaullah threw rocks at the dog and they kept throwing rocks at the dog, rocks at the dog until Allah gave a firmness and belief into the dog's heart that the dog stood up and spoke to them and said, doesn't matter how much rocks you throw, I will not stop in coming, that I want to come to be of service to you. You'll find benefit in me that you go for Allah's work and I'll, I'll serve a purpose. And that is a tremendous key that tariqah comes to teach and especially Naqshbandiya that it gave an opening for all people. Nobody can say they're too dirty for this reality. It's not about being holy, it's about a path towards holiness. This is not a gathering of holy people. But Allah making very clear that which in sharia is najas and is not something admirable dog, Allah is then describing this dog represents immense loyalty, immense loyalty and an immense reality to enter into this Divinely cave, to this Divinely reality. If Allah gives and gives the whole story of this dog not only was was allowed to accompany. The dog was given a majestic heba as if the lion from paradise and just the mere sight of the dog would put anyone into fear. They didn't even have to reach the power of the shaykhs that were lying down. Just the dog itself was enough to scare everyone away. If Allah will dress the dog with this, imagine what Allah dresses the believer with of majestic might and majestic power. And all that required for the dog and this what gives hopes to everybody is that we can all enter into this reality. It's not for an exclusive few. Allah says, anybody enter into this reality that's been written for them to hear this teaching, to adhere to it in their heart that they want to be from that reality, then Allah gives the opportunity by the example of the dog, then be like the dog. No matter what testing comes in your life, stay quiet, be firm and show the best of character. For at any time that dog started to gravel and bark and begin to attack, there would be no way that they would accept the dog because that dog would eat them when they're in a hall and, and not active in their physical body. The dog would not only would turn on to them to eat them. That's why Allah is saying there's no wildness in this reality. There's no satanic influence within insan inside the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad We're describing a cave of the heart of Prophet and the arwa and the souls, our souls want to be in that presence and Allah is saying that there's no wildness in that presence, there's no bad manners in that presence, there's no dirtiness and filthiness in that presence. That has to be taken out by the shaykhs by throwing stones. And that's why when we come to the path our lives are filled with testing, very difficult testing. The testing does not get easier, it gets harder because Allah is throwing and throwing and throwing to see what are the bad characteristics that are coming out. 
without this aspect there and everyone should know in their, in their being there is no way to achieve. There is no way to achieve this majestic light and this majestic presence with filthiness and dirtiness and the bad character is extremely filthy in Allah's eyes. It's not something small, it's something great and there's no excuse for it, there's no reason for it, there's no acceptable reason for it. No matter what happens to the servant they are to remain disciplined because they know that their life is about being tested, being tested, being tested. For if we give an excuse then we'll begin to always operate by that excuse. So I used to hear people say, oh some of the companions they were hard so I'm like that companion and that's a lie, they were not hard. However hard they were at the beginning Prophet disciplined them with extreme discipline. To the end people would come to see, we don't understand these men of magnificent warriors but when they sit around you they're all crying because of the softness and the beauty of their hearts that Prophet had opened in their, their reality. So we are not anywhere close to that station and that maqam. So what does Allah ask from us the most is then discipline, discipline ourselves. Everything comes in our life to test us to have the discipline and good character. And that, that good character we know when we're being tested, we know when something difficult is coming. And they say that every time only Allah look into your life they look with a majestic light. When they come and their nazar hits your home or hits your life or hits your work, the majestic light again is like a fire. When majestic light hits you it burns everything and agitates everything around you. So majestic light is not really understood. Jamal and Jamali light is that you dress and you begin to cry because it's a beatific light. Majestic light is fire. When majestic light enters into an, into an area and atmosphere everything's on fire, every devil is upset, everyone's devils are upset and the majesty and Hayba is the one whom holds it and controls it. And let everything to be angry and they hold their energy as not to lose that energy. So when people are not capable of holding majestic light they keep losing, losing, losing. As a result they just want Jamali light but Jamali light not going to help you against devils. You can't like throw out the love to them and the devils want to come and eat you and you want to throw out Jamali love and say, but you're just more delicious at that time for them. Everyone needs Hayba and a Hayba is a fire within their heart that just from their eyes comes a fire from Divine the Presence to burn away shayateen. So that without these testings and without this patience, without these good characteristics people are not capable of holding the Hayba. And that's why the dog is such an opening in this way because people will say, oh, I can't be from Masabu Kaf so then this doesn't make any relevance. No it's very relevant in our life that everybody's a dog and everybody's capable of being pure. And that's why now in this dunya that's all you hear from people, hate dog, hate dog and every bad horrible video talks about people as a male dog and female dog. So this is, this is not something by coincidence, Allah who is the author of Holy Qur'an is also author of this dunya and people can't seem to make the connection. The why Allah is saying that dirty dog has to be beaten. And everybody else is calling themselves in every video a dog, a male dog, a female dog, they have a word for a female dog and that's acceptable. And they're accepting to be called by this, this characteristic and Allah is teaching, no, no actually you have to hit that with a rock, you have to be tested. And that badness that now is entering on dunya they're not human. This way of insan is very difficult. And what we have now on earth is not humanity, they are inhumane and we're trying to regain our humanity by all of these testings and these disciplines. Once you lose that light by the wildness of dunya you are now washi, wild, it's not human. 
This way of bringing back light into the heart is to regain our humanity. We are trying to regain our humanity. Right now 99.9% of the earth is now animalistic and that's why they kill, they rape, they kill, they don't care for anything and they're just acting as wild animals. So this way of regaining humanity is then by taking difficulties and having discipline. If not then they go to the animal that they want to exhibit and that will be the way in which they meet Allah with their animalistic characteristics and then be handed into the hands of shayateen and the dajjal empire that is being built upon this earth. We pray that Allah guide us and dress us. Bless us with the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad and these knowledges enter into our heart and to our soul and that to bless us with the lights of Mawlid the Nabi to keep us alive to see those nights and to be blessed by that event. The Milad the Nabi is not something that could be understand. We put out a video from Shaykh Atnan about Ya Ahad, Ya Samad, Salli Ala Muhammad InshaAllah we try to talk about that tomorrow and Saturday night and its realities and its dress upon and son and the Muhammadan dress that Allah want to dress His creation from inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammadin Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.